Hello everyone, and welcome to the guided tour of the Enchanted Forest, Trail to the Mansion and Tunnel. The Enchanted Forest is also known as the Haunted Forest, Cobb Estate, and Las Flores Canyon. Okay, so how do you get here? I recommend typing Lake and Altaloma and Altadena in the maps.google.com website, and it will mark this location. Also, if you're going to be hiking at night, please bring a flashlight, and do not rush. Take your time. There are slippery steep cliffs, poison ivy, plants with sharp thorns and giant ore weaver spiders everywhere, so it can get quite dangerous. All right, here's another little warning for you night hikers. If you're parked on these streets after 10 p.m., you will get a ticket. Your best bet will be to park on one of these side streets. Okay, so we're gonna start this trail by bypassing the gates on the right, and walking up this long driveway. This is the Cobb Estate. This 107 acre land was purchased by a lumber magnate named Charles H. Cobb in 1916. By 1918, he and his wife moved into a mansion they had built here. Now, as the driveway curves to the left, there's actually another trail you can go to on the right. You see where it says trail? This path leads you on the San Mariel Trail, where there used to be an 80-room Victorian hotel known as the Echo Mountain House, or the White City. It was built in 1894. It's a three-mile hike, very beautiful. Maybe one day I'll make another video showing you that trail, but not today. So let's continue. So after Charles H. Cobb died in 1939, the land was given to the Scottish Rite Cathedral in Pasadena, and later it became a retreat for the Sisters of St. Joseph. But in 1956, the estate was purchased by Groucho Marx and his family. Yes, this Groucho Marx. They bought the estate as an investment and wanted to turn it into a cemetery. When that decision failed, the estate was forgotten. Soon it became a popular hangout for misfits and in 1959, the mansion was demolished. And all that remains are a foundation, a short brick wall, and some steps. So here it is, the mansion. This is where it's located on the map. There you go, and here is the only picture in existence of the Hob Mansion, probably from this angle. Right over here are the steps that lead into the house. But if we take a look around, everything is gone. So let's continue our journey. So by 1971, the Marx Brothers decided to auction off the land, and housing developers were very interested. That's when Bob Byrne stepped in. Here he is holding a picture of himself from 1971. He was a teacher from John Muir High School, and along with students and support from the city, they raised $175,000 to purchase the land. So thanks to them, we can enjoy this wonderful trail. There's another hidden trail right here. If you look to the left, there's a huge tree with a yellow sign and a working water fountain. Well, to the right, there's a little path. This trail takes you to water tunnel number eight. It's a pretty short trip when you get there, but I really don't recommend this trail at night. It's pretty dangerous. So let's keep going. Now at night, this is still a popular hangout for misfits. I mean, I'm one of them. But people say this forest is haunted. Now I've been coming here at night for the last five years and I've never seen anything out of the ordinary. But whatever, people will believe whatever they want, I guess. In 1934, Carrie, Charles' wife, passed away and he built Pasadena's Scottish Rite Cathedral in dedication to her memory. The year after, a forest fire almost burned down his house. Fortunately, he had built a 200,000 gallon reservoir that helped protect his property. And here it is on the left. It's the second point of interest on our map. If you look straight, but a little to the right, you'll see where the path continues. Now when you get here, there's two ways you can go. You can either go up the mountain, which I don't recommend unless you have adequate hiking gear, or you can go to the right, there's a little path. So we're gonna take that. Remember, this is a dangerous path and I do not recommend this at night. Honestly, I don't even recommend this in the daytime. If you follow this path, be very careful. I am not liable for any damages you may cause on yourself or those traveling with you. This guide is merely educational and should only be viewed, never attempted. In the 1880s, gold mining began in these canyons. 
tunnel number eight that we had passed earlier was one of them. But they soon began tunneling it for irrigation water because it became more profitable. There are a total of 13 tunnels in this canyon. However, most of them have been sealed. Like this one, the McNally Tunnel, or mine, whatever you want to call it. It's to the left of the path. Its length is 288 feet. However, it's been sealed for many years, so you can only get in about 20 feet. Returning to our journey. A little bit farther down the path, I came across a hill that I had to climb down. Here's an opposite shot of what it looks like. I had to be very careful because that's got to be a good 25 foot drop. Anywho, I continue following the path and now the river is on my left side. I try to avoid grabbing onto any branches because spiders like to rest on them, especially at night. Plus as many plants that have thorns and of course the dreaded poison ivy plant can be found all over this place. Essentially, I don't touch anything when I come over here. Now here, the river disappears, but we're gonna cross to the left anyway. And when we get to the top, the river will now be on our right side. So on this path, I'm gonna turn left and climb up. There's two more just like this. Okay, again, I'm gonna turn left and climb up. And last one, I'm gonna turn left and climb up. Once I climb the third hill, I know I'm going in the right direction. Okay, in the 19 minute mark, this is a nice pipe to grab onto for some support. The path may be difficult to see in some parts, but if you walk alongside the river, you should be fine. If the river is dry, then look for the pipes that stick out of the mountain and the ground. Those pipes lead you to the tunnel. And now we're going to cross the river again, and now the river's on our left side. Now this, which looks like a cement gravesite or something, is actually a housing where water pumps used for irrigation were stored. There's actually two of them here. Here's the second one. Now let's continue towards that rock with a big H on it. I hope that stands for hello and not haunted. Okay, so we're gonna walk on the left side of the rock, keep going straight. There's a little path on the left side, kinda hidden. Now I'm at an area where there's a little waterfall, kind of a wall in front of me, but on my left, there's a little hill that I had to climb. Found out a little bit tricky since I was holding my camera. Okay, we're gonna cross the river again, and now the river's on our left side. All right, you see all those loose rocks in front of me? The ones giving me trouble getting up on this hill? Well, that means that I'm almost there, but it also means that I need to watch out for a potential rock slide. Ah, we have finally arrived to the tunnel. This path continues for a little while up ahead. You just need to climb above the tunnel and just keep going. But eventually you end up to a dead end and honestly there's nothing else more of interest past this tunnel. All right, so let's go check it out. The first thing you'll notice when you approach the entrance is how warm it is. The deeper I went in, the quicker my lens kept fogging up, so I had to constantly clean it. But the interior is very beautiful. Hello! Now for those that dare venture inside, I'm leaving you a little treasure. What, it's five dollars? I'm not a millionaire. Consider it a little incentive. I'll even give you a hint where it's located at. Well, thank you for following me, Brother B videos, on this guided tour of the Enchanted Forest, trail to the mansion and tunnel. And now I gotta get back to civilization. See ya!